well, not far from dead. As you said, there are so many opportunities now with all the different channels, with yeah. different platforms. What happens is a lot of people don't know how to how to navigate this this world now, this music world, the, the technology and how to get their stuff across. If you've got somebody that handles everything for you and knows what they're doing, the possibilities are infinite because before you relied on your record company to release your record in Sweden and Norway and all right, that's fine, right? And somebody in Sweden, if they could be bothered, would try and get you on the radio in Sweden. You had to go there and become friends with them and do a few gigs. And the, the guy from the rebel company would come and meet you, and then oh yeah, they're quite nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll make more of an effort. Whereas that's how it worked. That's how it worked the world over. You know, I mean, they've got Swedish we're Swedish artists. I'd rather work on a Swedish artist than these guys from England. They've got hits in England. They're fine. Let's go and work with Swedish artists. It's a general thing, you know. Easier, yeah. easier life. <coughs> now, if you've got if you've got one or two people that control everything for you and know what they're doing and they know where to do, how to do the PR for you, where with whom, towards which, uh, uh, yeah, on what platform, etc., cetera, um, it can really pick up. You just, and I, I think that's why record companies, record companies have become a bit disillusioned and a bit, oh, you know, and a lot of them have fallen by the wayside because they can't say to you anymore, um, you record a record, we'll sell it, and we'll give you 30p for every album we sell. Because we're taking the risk by putting it out for you. So every album you sell, we'll give you 30p. Well, hang on a minute. Without me, there'd be no album. Well, you know, without the act or whatever, why 30 p You know, some of them were ridiculous deals. Some were great deals because they were great artists and they knew that if they didn't don't tie them down to a, a good deal, they'll go elsewhere. Yeah. A lot of times they took advantage of musicians uh, and uh, of, of acts in general, and now they can't do that. And and it, going back to even even at the time, I remember when they were charging 15 quid for a CD, a normal CD. CD album comes out, five quid on the vinyl, 15 quid on CD. It doesn't have to be 15 quid. They could actually have, it's been proven, and I'm sure you know this because you've done your studying, they could have put the album out and the CD out at the same price. So people who've invested in a CD player could buy the CD. No, because it's new technology. We can fleece everybody and say, no, it's 15 quid. It's here. But they cost the same to, to produce at the time. Mm. Um, and I think that was just the record companies started to cash in as much as they could. Yeah. Yes, the artist would get more. It get it wouldn't get thirty. It get thirty people. It get a bit more because it's three times the price. Yeah. But it put people. It put the members of the public off from buying it. It made them buy the out the, the the album, you know, the vinyl. Um, and it just proved once again that the record companies do not look at the interest of the artist. They look at the interest of themselves. How much can we make as an association? out of this person and then use that money to pay everybody big dividends, a lot of corporations. And I just sort of think that's what, that's what ruined it for everybody. If there had been a bit, a lot of record companies would still be, the folded would still be around today if they'd just been a bit less greedy. Yeah. They basically priced themselves out of the market. 